My name is Shane Kimbrough, commander of NASA's SpaceX Crew-2 mission to the International Space Station. Well, our crew is getting ready to launch on a private company's spacecraft called Dragon. Uh, the company is SpaceX, obviously. And we're going to launch to the International Space Station, spend about six months up there doing world-class science and research, some spacewalks, um, some visiting vehicles are going to join us while we're up there. And then coming back home safely, we're going to land in uh, a body of water, either the Atlantic or the Gulf of Mexico. The mission of Crew-2 is to perform a safe space flight, be as efficient as a crew as we can, and give the ground teams and all the researchers around the world the very best effort that we have. Yeah, so it's a, I love this capsule we're riding on. It was named Endeavour on the Demo-2 flight. Um, uh, it has special meaning for me. I flew on the Space Shuttle Endeavour, so I'm really excited to fly on another spacecraft called Endeavour. Um, it's even more significant, I think, for Megan, because she's going to fly in the same seat that her husband Bob flew in on the same spacecraft. Um, so that's pretty neat. During Demo 2, I was uh, with the crew in quarantine. I was kind of running those operations down in Florida, so very um, close to the crew and the families uh, and kind of ran all the daily operations for the crew while we were down in Florida. And then on launch day, I was uh, in crew quarters still, um, kind of manning up the Contingency Action Center and also the Action Center for the Vehicle Integration Test Office. Oh, well, we learned a lot. Um, uh, we do things differently down in Florida now than we did for shuttle. So it was just a whole different world. We kind of blended, I would say, the best things from shuttle um, during quarantine and launch day operations and the best things from Soyuz that we've learned over the years. And kind of now we have a hybrid of those really good things on launch day especially. So I think it's, uh, it's a special day. I think we'll talk about launch day here in a minute, but uh, it's really fun time. Yeah, so I was uh, the chief of the Vehicle Integration Test Office, um, commonly referred to as VIDO around here. Um, and, and in that role, I got to really, um, as a commercial crew program ramped up, I got to be with both providers, with Boeing and with SpaceX, to help them develop their operations for launch day and landing day. And then integrate their team with the NASA team and medical teams and all of the other people that play into those really dynamic events. Well, really, I'm just a facilitator for some amazing people, Megan, Aki, and Tama, and I'm hopefully just going to stay out of their way. But really, I'm, I'm really the commander and in charge of the operations anytime we're in the Dragon vehicle. So that's pre-launch through launch um, on orbit until we get to the space station. Um, it's, I'd say it's very similar, honestly, to what Crew-1 is doing now. So it's, um, we're going to go up there. I mentioned a bit earlier, we're just going to do a bunch of nice research and science um, that's going to benefit all of humanity or it's going to help us with future exploration. So that's exciting to be part of something that's that grand. Uh, we will have some spacewalks planned for our um, expedition while we're up there. So that'll be uh, some great days out there to go outside. And I think I'll be going outside with Tama and Aki for um, up to four spacewalks while we're there. So that'll be fun. Uh, and then the, again, just enjoying life together. Um, the downtime that we do get is going to be really fun hanging out with this crew and with our Russian colleagues as well. Yeah, the training is, uh, you know, we're very busy these days as we're leading up to launch. We're about three months from launch, a little under that. So um, our training is really ramping up. Uh, we train all around the world. So we just uh, recently returned from Russia and Germany where we were training at the uh, astronaut training centers over there. Um, and now we're pretty much um, here in the United States until launch, um, training a lot with SpaceX and a lot with the space station program here uh, in Houston. Uh, but just getting us ready to go. So with the simulation program, uh, the SIM program we call it for short, with SpaceX is really ramping up. Uh, Megan and I have uh, usually three simulations a week with the SpaceX and sometimes the NASA uh, mission control team. So that's really fun working with them and getting to know them and, and learning the vehicle more for Megan and I. Um, Tama and Aki come in every now and then, but they're not, they're, their schedule isn't that aggressive. Uh, because they can't really see a whole lot in the vehicle, um, but they can help us out, you know, when we're getting out of our suits and when we have emergencies and that kind of stuff. So we do um, roll them in for those kind of things. 
Yeah, the biggest difference right off the bat is the training flow is a lot shorter. So I, I, wasn't, I was assigned in July, so this is going to be about nine months to launch for me. So I personally like that a lot. Uh, it makes my schedule a lot busier, but uh, it's, you know, to me, better than two and a half years of training like we did for the, the previous flight. It's a lot, uh, a lot more time in the United States um, instead of going to Russia about every other month like I did for Soyuz and like crew members do for that. Um, we, you know, are here. Well, we do go to SpaceX out in Hawthorne, California quite a bit, but that's maybe, um, you know, on average about one week a month. Uh, they have a nice simulator out there. Uh, we do a lot of ground training, first of all, to kind of learn the systems on the vehicle. And then we start hopping into the simulator, uh, learning how to fly that vehicle and operate that vehicle um, on the launch pad, on orbit, uh, and then after, after splashdown. Uh, the unique piece, I think, for me is um, working with SpaceX, right? So that's the new, kind of the new thing for me and a lot of our team is working with them. Now, I did get to work with them for the past um, couple years leading up to the Demo 2 flight, but it was different people I was working with. So now the training teams and the mission control teams at, at SpaceX, that's kind of a new thing for me. And, uh, just uh, learning their culture and learning how incredibly talented they are out there. It's really fun. Uh, I really enjoy it. Um, they inspire me. I, I love going out there and working with them. And I know we're going to have a great product, and our mission is going to be really successful due to, due to um, how successful and talented they are. We've, uh, due to COVID, uh, believe it or not, um, something good has come out of it, and that's that our crew has gotten to spend a lot more time together um, because when we go stay in places, we don't stay in hotels. We stay like in an Airbnb. Um, so we spend quality time in the evenings together and just getting to know each other. So that's something that's kind of lost, I think, sometimes when you're just traveling around the world, staying in hotels. And um, I think it's a huge benefit for us now, but, um, unfortunately due to COVID, but it's something that we're pulling out of it as a positive. Yeah, we do a lot of great training here at the Johnson Space Center. Um, a lot of that includes spacewalk training, uh, as well as all the systems on the International Space Station, um, some science and research activities. Um, I was just training on some of those today already. So um, our teams here, they some, some of the teams are, are based here. Some are based all over the place, but they come in here to train us. So we're really honored that they're here to train us. And uh, we're going to do, again, an incredible job, the best job we can for those teams while we're on orbit. Launch days are always very special. We don't get many of those. Anybody, you know, in their whole lifetime, for me, this will be, you know, luckily my third. But it's not something we get to do all the time. But it's a, it's a really great day. Um, it's generally a happy day. Sometimes it's stressful. It just depends on the person. Um, but in Florida, we're going we're gonna to wake up. We're going to go have kind of a, a, you know, a launch day breakfast or whatever time of day it is kind of meal um, together. Uh, once that's done, then really we're kind of flowing into launch. So once that's over, we'll head down to our rooms. We'll start getting our uh, what we call our undergarments on. Um, and then we'll go into a weather briefing from SpaceX just to update us on any weather changes that they anticipate that day. That's about four hours prior to launch. Uh, once that's done, we'll head into the, the famous suit room down in astronaut crew quarters down in Florida and start getting our spacesuits on. Uh, we'll do some leak checks there. Uh, once that all passes and we're good to go, then uh, we're, we'll uh, say hello probably to some VIPs. That's the way it's happened these last few launches. We'll see if it happens for ours as well. And then we'll head out. We'll do kind of walk out of the building. You probably also, a lot of people have seen that. It's the same building that the you know, astronauts have walked out of any launch really from Florida. So it's a lot of history there. Uh, one thing that is different that we pulled over from uh, what we learned with the Soyuz launch day ops is to actually have our families there at walkout. So that did not used to be the case for Space Shuttle. I think it's a really nice addition. So it's, it's one more chance for us to kind of eye to eye with our families, our immediate families, uh, and say goodbye to them before we head out to the launch pad. Well, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I love uh, the Kennedy Space Center and all the teams down there that I've gotten to work with. Um, I love it for our country, our nation, that we're launching out of the U.S. again. It's a great capability that we have um, and just happy to be doing it again out of Florida. I have not heard from Suichi on that. We got a little bit of debrief from, uh, from Hopper and Ike. 
Um, but it's a good ride. Bob and Doug have told us a little bit as well. So uh, looking forward to an incredible ride uh, on the rockets, on the Falcon rocket. And, uh, you know, we'll have to compare it once we get done. I don't know what Suichi told you, but Space Shuttle for me was um, you're kind of rocking and rolling for the first couple of minutes while the solid rocket boosters are on. And then it smooths out and it's pure acceleration. Uh, the landing coming back in is super smooth because you're landing on a runway. And Soyuz to me was kind of the opposite. It was a really smooth ride uphill, but coming back was really violent and uh, pretty incredible that we uh, made it through that. But uh, they've been doing it for many, many years and uh, a proven product for sure. Yeah, you're right. It's, um, it's heavily automated, which is great. Uh, we are ready to take over at any time manually, and the great training teams are getting us and making sure that we are ready to go through all the simulations that I mentioned earlier. Uh, but yeah, we're monitoring everything, uh, just like you know, most of the time on anything you're kind of, any vehicle these days is almost automated, and this is no different. SpaceX has got a great, great vehicle, um, a great, you know, docking system and docking profile to get us there safely, and uh, looking forward to doing that for, the, for our first time. Yeah, so I went to uh, West Point, and as a result of going to West Point, you owe the Army some time for that uh, college experience. And uh, so I was lucky enough to get selected to go to Army's flight school, and so I went and did that. And then coming out of there, I got selected to be an Apache pilot. So I went to another course there. And then from there, I went directly into Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm during the Gulf War back in the early 90s. So uh, that's quite an indoctrination into the Army was going to combat for my first uh, experience, but really one that I, I learned a ton from, obviously. Um, we came back. My unit was stationed in Savannah, Georgia. So I was there a few more years. And then I um, went to Fort Bragg after that, where I got to do probably the best job in the Army, and that's being a company commander. Um, so I got to do that at Fort Bragg. And then it was time for me to make a decision whether I wanted to continue mainstream or, or maybe do something a little different in the Army. And I had a good opportunity to go to graduate school through the Army, and so I took that opportunity to go to Georgia Tech. Um, from there, I went to kind of pay the Army back a little bit by teaching at West Point. Um, I wasn't super excited about going back because I wanted to get back in the cockpit and fly, um, but it was truly probably the most rewarding experience I've had we were, was working with cadets and getting the chance to share some leadership techniques with them, knowing that they're going to be the future leaders of our Army. So that was a really special tour. And then I got the good fortune after that to get called to come down to Johnson Space Center, not to be an astronaut, but to work out at Ellington Field and fly on the old shuttle training aircraft and training the NASA, you know, astronaut commanders and pilots uh, had to land the space shuttle. So that was a pretty cool gig. And then in 2004, I got lucky enough to get selected. Um, that's a great question. I just, I love it. I don't, it doesn't matter what I'm flying, a helicopter, an airplane. Um, it's just, it's just incredible. The views we get are great. The sensations you have um, of moving a machine around. Uh, the helicopter flying to me is, is really a lot of fun because generally we're down in the trees. It's very challenging um, and there's not a, you know, most things that are challenging. I love to try to, to do that. So uh, this is no different. And uh, now learning to fly jets around here at NASA has been pretty incredible too. Had to hang up the helicopter keys, but uh, pulled out some jet keys and it's pretty nice. Yeah, I'd always wanted to be an astronaut ever since I was a little kid. Uh, a lot of people say that, and I was lucky enough to, uh, my grandparents lived in Titusville, um, right across from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. So I spent a lot of time down there as a small, small child. And my grandfather was really the inspiration behind all this because he would drag me out to see anything launching. I'm sure I wasn't super happy <laughs> as a small child, but well, for whatever reason, it kind of stuck in my blood and I love the Space Coast and um, always wanted to do it. I, uh, the ironic thing is when I decided to go to West Point, I, I figured that my dream of being an astronaut was gone, so I kind of gave up on it because I didn't realize you could be in the Army and be an astronaut, but turns out you can. So um, I got lucky enough a few years down the road to get selected. Yeah, I've been very fortunate. Uh, back in 2008, I flew on STS-126. Uh, we were kind of a resupply mission for the International Space Station at the time. So we had a big module in the back of the space shuttle, but it wasn't staying there. It was a big uh, resupply mission. So they called our mission actually the Extreme Home Makeover Mission for the space station. Um, so we got a chance to bring up new bedrooms, a new bathroom, a new kitchen. You can kind of see where this is going, a new gym, um, and really outfit the station to be able to support more than three crew members. So. 
Um, that was pretty cool to be part of that. And then to go back a few years later in 2016 and 2017 when I flew on the Soyuz with my two Russian crewmates to be parts of Ex Expedition 49 and 50 um, for about six months. So then I got to reap the benefits of all the things that we brought up um, a few years before that. Um, that was an incredible time up there. The long duration piece is obviously a lot different than the shuttle couple week mission. Uh, there's a different cadence, a different rhythm you have to get into, uh, more of a marathon pace versus a sprint pace, but uh, really fantastic crew members that I had. And I got to enjoy life a lot with Peggy and Tama on the U.S. side, and then Oleg, Sergei, and Andre on the Russian side. Uh, space hawking is incredible. Obviously, it's hard, really hard to describe how amazing that, that is. Um, our mission on the space shuttle mission was to repair the big solar array mechanism that uh, actually allows the solar rays to track the sun when we go around the Earth. So one of those, the, the one on the starboard side of the space station, had frozen up um, about a year or so before our mission. So we were then trained to go out and repair this thing that was never supposed to be repaired in space. Uh, so we got to be part of the design team that created new tools and the whole process. It was really a, a great time working with the engineers uh, and the scientists to make sure that when we did this, uh, we had one shot at doing it correctly and, and thank goodness we did it right. Um, so those are, that was a lot of high pressure, honestly, um, for anybody, um, much less a rookie like myself going out to fix something this major on the International Space Station. But obviously when you're when you're contributing to something like that that's going to help prolong the life of station, um, you feel really humble for one, but uh, really good inside and very rewarding experience to do that. Absolutely. Um, I was thrilled when uh, I realized I was going to be assigned with Tama again. Um, Tama was an incredible crewmate before. Uh, we didn't really get to train together much, just the way our schedules worked out leading up to that last long duration mission. Uh, but we were together about five of the five and a half or so months that I was on board. So most of my expedition and Tama and I got to share a lot of great memories together, whether it was working or spacewalking together or just hanging out in the cupola, looking at planet Earth every night before we went to bed for about an hour. So we've become very close. Yeah, it's, it's interesting um, being my third flight, but they're, they're all different stages of my kids' life, right? So um, this one's very different. They're all, I will call them adult children now, over 21. Um, all are still in school, um, and we're super proud of them, of course. And, and really, my wife and I just want to make it uh, as, as normal as possible, if that's, if that's even possible in a situation like this. But we want them to continue, obviously, you know, pursuing their dreams, working hard in school. Um, getting a job whenever that time presents itself and hopefully this won't disrupt that. Um, they certainly understand what's going on now better than when they were 8 and 10 back on my first launch. Um, so it's kind of a different dynamic there. They're all very excited about this one. Um, I, would, I would say they probably weren't super excited about my last couple, <laughs> but they're very excited about this one and it's been great to kind of keep them in the loop with all of my training and they're all, they're, they seem to be very interested in that. And to me, that's really great just to keep everybody informed and there's really no surprises for them, hopefully, uh, when we launch and while we're on orbit. Oh, absolutely. And uh, my, my last flight's, I think, a good example of how we tried to do that. Um, and we just, again, try to keep it as normal as possible. What does that mean? Well, um, if they were having trouble in homework, guess what? They would just email me the homework and we'd try to work it out from orbit uh, via email or I could just call them if, if it was that urgent. So things like that, uh, a lot of people don't think about, but uh, I told them, hey, if I can't answer this, somebody up here can. So uh, <laughs> we'll get you an answer to whatever that problem was and, and things like that. Uh, communication's really great from the space station. So I, I have the chance to call home every day, which I did on my last flight. I intend to do that this time as well. And the kids I won't talk to every day just due to their schedules, but, uh, you know, two or three times a week we'll be able to connect. And then once, usually on the weekends, we'll get to do a video conference with the entire family. So that's really special, and it's just a way we stay connected and uh, to their lives, not just mine. No, um, honestly... Uh, the mission last time was to go up there and uh, do what uh, the programs wanted us to do. Uh, we didn't, no, nobody, on our, nobody on our crew had any special projects or anything, so we were com totally committed to doing uh, what the program wanted us to do, and I intend to do the same on this one. Um, there's nothing that, you know, I love taking pictures, and we do that in our free time. Um, Tamar really got me interested in that, so I look forward to doing the same thing with him. But, again, there's nothing else on my agenda um, except working um, 
during our normal work hours and then just enjoying the crew in the off time. Yeah, in a lot of ways, uh, we haven't, I mean, we've learned a lot, but we haven't changed a whole lot because, again, this is only the third human flight of this vehicle, right? So when we get into the range and we've flown, you know, I don't say put a number on it, 30 to 50 times, then I think things will be more routine. Um, even though they're calling these flights operational and we had one de demo mission with Demo 2, um, I think they're all pretty much test flights still until you get, you know, a lot more data um, points um, to be able to compare. Now, having said that, the NASA and SpaceX teams have, have certainly looked at what happened on Demo 2 and changed things and made it better for Crew 1. Um, and then uh, we're getting data from Crew 1 already uh, on the launch side, and they're working on better fixes for that. Uh, when they come home, I'm sure those changes will be implemented for not us because we'll probably already be up there, but for Crew 3 and, and beyond. So the teams are doing a great job trying to adjust and make this the safest um, vehicle possible, and we obviously appreciate that. It's really incredible to think about all the teams and the actual individuals that play into making a mission happen. Um, we, the crew, are a very small piece of that team. Uh, we're, we're deeply honored to be part of that team, but nobody in the, in the entire team is any more special than, than anybody else. So uh, we know that. We, we are standing on, on the, the shoulders of all these people that are preparing us, training us, working on the vehicles, um, and getting us ready to go. And so we can, can't thank them enough for all the efforts that they're doing and the sacrifices they're making um, to their families. So we do want to appreciate them and thank them very much. And then hopefully when we're on board, we can make them proud um, and then come home and, and celebrate with them as long as uh, COVID's done. <laughs> um, a few things I'll add maybe are just that, uh, again, we're very excited about this mission. Um, it doesn't come without sacrifice that I think most people know. Um, and really that's on our families more than it is on us. So um, hopefully you guys will all keep our families in your thoughts and prayers um, as we go through this mission. It's not easy on any of us, but it's certainly not on our families. Um, so thank you for thinking of them.